Hello and welcome to the Scatterville channel and today let me show you how you can build your own gaming and streaming setup like this for all of your YouTube and Twitch content creation starting with the main PC hardware you might need. First though I'm going to give a big thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring some of the products I'll be featuring throughout this video to help better illustrate what components you might need to help build the computer that lets you do all the things content creation. Choosing the right graphics card is going to have a big impact on your streaming experience going forward. Not just, of course, through providing the graphics performance you'll need to run the games that you're going to be broadcasting, but also for providing the hardware-based streaming coder that'll actually let you transcode your streams up to Twitch or YouTube. And right now, the most popular graphics card brand to do that with is with NVIDIA RTX graphics cards with the NVEC encoder and with additional features like NVIDIA Broadcast. So if you weren't already using a gaming headset with an active noise cancellation microphone built into it, like the Razer Kraken here, then you can use a feature like RTX Voice, which will do its own AI-based noise cancellation for whatever microphone you're using, or better yet, you can combine both of them to have absolutely zero extraneous background noise with your microphone in your Twitch or YouTube live stream. And fortunately though, AMD does have its own version of RTX voice through the means of AMD noise suppression, though at the moment it isn't as high quality or as good as RTX voice. Regardless though, you may not need RTX voice or AMD noise suppression at all if you had a high quality USB microphone like the Elgato Wave 3, with its own environmentally conscious packaging that can already do a lot of noise cancellation built into the microphone thanks to its cardioid pickup pattern. So when it comes to noise cancellation software, it's either a necessity or accessory depending on your situation, or if you had a high quality microphone like one from the Elgato Wave 3 or a good one with built-in noise cancellation like from the Razer Kraken, then you won't need one at all. What will be a necessity though is choosing the right hardware-based streaming coder for your experiences going forward because that will have a direct impact on the video quality you have that's going to be going out to your YouTube or Twitch account. So right now in 2022, we either have NVIDIA's NVEC or AMD's AMF encoder. And in terms of straight video quality, NVEC does slightly edge out, although AMD AMF is not too far behind. And I'm going to admit mentioning software-based encoders like X264 through a CPU because while they may produce the same quality, they take up a lot more resources on your computer, which can affect its performance when you're actually gaming and try to perform at your best for your viewers. So really software-based encoding is kind of a thing of the past because hardware-based encoding is the way to go, especially with the aspect of AV1 encoding on the horizon, which is set to be even more efficient and better quality than either NVEC or AMD AMF. Now, if you were to compare each of these stream encoders side by side, I bet you wouldn't be able to tell that much of a visual difference. But when you started adding in additional elements like graphics, a virtual avatar, or a high resolution camera feed like that from a Canon R10, then you might need all the quality you can get. Especially with a camera feed like that again of the R10, with its great out of the box video settings and high megapixel count, you wouldn't want to hamper its native image quality with artifacting and low bitrate blockiness. So in 2022, you really can't go wrong with either brand of graphics card for your streaming experience, although each have their pros and cons. Right now, NVIDIA graphics cards do come at a premium, but yet again, they do offer slightly better streaming performance with a better built-in hardware encoder, whereas AMD graphics cards cost substantially less and perform better just in terms of straight gaming performance, but have that AMF encoder, which is not as good as NVEC. So it's gonna come down to, do you wanna spend more money on a graphics card with slightly better streaming performance, but less gaming performance, or a graphics card that's cheaper and doesn't have as good of a built-in stream encoder, but it's gonna be the faster card overall. You'll have to make that call for yourself. Or if you wanna go the really technical way, you can grab an Intel Arc A320, slap it into your computer, with its own AV1 encoder and have better streaming quality than either NVEC or AMF and have your other graphics card just do all the gaming. You could do that as well. So with all of that hardware, stream encoder, blah, 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 talk out of the way, let's talk about how you should spec out the rest of your system, starting with the main processor. Now, like I said earlier, X264 based software encoding is kind of a way of the past. So you don't need a huge 12 or 16 core CPU to use for a streaming computer you can just go ahead and use a regular six or eight core CPU that you'd find best for your gaming PC. 
and that'll be more than plenty for your average streaming experience. Do note though that you're still building a gaming PC at the end of the day, so you probably want some good peripherals that can match up to the performance of your computer, especially if you're gonna be playing a game like Apex Legends, Fortnite, Call of Duty, where you need to be at the top of your game and your peripherals need to be there alongside with you. And if that's the case, you might wanna look into something like the Razer Viper version 2 Pro that could be a very effective wireless mouse with low latency that can let you perform at your highest level. Then as for the rest of the computer, like when it comes to RAM, anything over 16 gigabytes is going to be enough, but for storage, do keep in mind that you probably want a space to store all of your previous streams onto, which can take up a lot of storage. So maybe looking into a large hard drive or reusing a hard drive from like an old computer or just buying a really big SSD could be the way to go. And then the last thing I wanna to touch on, which I think a lot of people overlook when it comes to building or specking out the streaming computer is how good the cooling performance of your computer is gonna be. Because you don't wanna sign up for a two hour long live stream and be like in your really nice gaming chair like this Razer Isker X with this PVC leather, bolstered seats, lumbar supports, and you don't wanna be drenching tons of sweat into it, especially with how nice it's gonna be on stream. So you probably want a computer with adequate cooling. So make sure you have enough case fans, especially pushing to your graphics card and enough to have it going out of the case as well as exhaust. And it would be nice to invest in a good aftermarket cooler, whether that be a water cooler or an aftermarket air cooler. So that's it. And once again, thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring some of the components I used to help create this pretty cool streaming setup here, which once again, all of those will be linked in the description below. And hopefully this was a helpful video. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching. And this is the Scatterville channel signing out.